really, I was reading th uh, that, you know, in, um, from the International Center for, you know, Youth in Mediation, looking about issues of why conflict arises in Africa, they actually underscore that 65% of, of, of people who are living in sub-Saharan Africa mm -hmm. are actually young people. Kenyan included. 70, 70 percent 65, that is mm -hmm. leading to 70 yes. percent of the population that we are having in sub-Saharan mm -hmm. Africa and also under the IGAD, you know, Intergovernmental mm -hmm. Agency on Development. They, they, they are actually staring at a situation where we are going to have a youth bulge mm -hmm. and that would actually spiral up to serious conflict and serious delusion because you remember mm -hmm. young people, especially in, in Northern Africa, actually finding their way in Mediterranean Sea to Europe. What mm -hmm. are they going to do? They're seeking for jobs and right. risking their lives in Mediterranean Sea. So it's, it's a global phenomenon even as we speak. It's not mm -hmm. only a, you know, an issue that is Kenyan oriented. Now let's come back to Kenya. We are having a situation where each and every election year, the government campaigns on a platform of provision of jobs. Mm -hmm. That is something my friend has also noted. Yes. Mm -hmm. The agenda is about young people being employed. How do you employ people if you're not providing employment? Mm -hmm. um, you realize that not an except the Kibaki government mm -hmm. uh, coming in a situation of 2002 where there was a number of, uh, there was a deja vu, what I call, you know, that kind of euphoria mm -hmm. that we are getting to new Kenya and that means we are going to get jobs and revive informal settlement and realize that Kibaki was more a bit intellectual in matters of dealing with economic revival and you could actually that indeed even as much as his manifesto did not meet by the end of his term a number of young people got to jobs now let's come back to Jubilee government first term riding on youth em em employment second term the conversion of Jubilee Manifesto to Agenda 4. And this is why I am saying that it is important for us to advise the government that even within the pillar of the Big Four Agenda, mm -hmm. for example, manufacturing, could it be important for young people who are actually graduating from work to be assumed in value addition, for example, so that we provide jobs? It is not a ma even a matter of jobs, because this is one thing I am always talking to young people. Mm -hmm. A sense of entitlement is killing the youth completely. How many of us are graduating from school and are graduating from tertiary institutions and you feel entitled that you can just walk in an office with your degree and get a job? It's becoming an illusion. So the issue about young people, you know, thinking mm -hmm. that once I graduate and have a degree on my hand, I'm entitled to get a job. It's actually becoming difficult in that we are now trying to ask people to be, you know, what we call creative in nature. Mm -hmm. Creativity doesn't mean that you provide so many unique and have technical skills. <laughs> it means thinking mm -hmm. of how you use what you have to provide for a job. Then goes to the government. Young people must be provided with a space of creativity. We cannot be talking about, you know, create your own jobs, but at the same time, mm -hmm. not providing young people with opportunities. For example, Agpo. Look at the people who have actually secured contract within Agbo. Most of them, mm -hmm. I can guarantee you, the people who are actually established, right. but using companies in proxy mm -hmm. to gain this contract. Young people who are actually nourishing their, you know, their skills are always approached with the question of how experienced are you? Uh, with that, of course, I want us before before we even now go to our next topic of youth empowerment. I want us to I want us to look at this unemployment rate in Kenya decreased to nine point three zero percent in twenty eighteen. That is from uh, eleven point five from the previous year. That is twenty seventeen, and I, I don't know what, what you think about this. <laughs> briefly before we go to the next one. Uh, well, well th that's what I've said. I'm very keen on, uh -huh. on statistics that are given from, uh, you know, certain government institutions, even though <coughs> they're the ones that should be providing us with accurate statistics. Mm -hmm. That is subject to interrogation. But even if there's a decline of unemployment, I would be interested which kind of employment for young people. All right. The problem that we are now dealing with is mm -hmm. mis mismatch of skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is one thing that we should be looking. Let Kenyans not be proud that the number of young people mm -hmm. 
as many as we can assume mm -hmm. in the Juakali industry. Mm -hmm. That is what we should be celebrating. Yes. I am telling you, mm -hmm. there are skills, there are very critical skills that are leaving uh, tertiary institutions mm -hmm. that we cannot say that this must be, you know, uh, absorbed within the informal employment. Mm -hmm. Can we provide a space where people meet the skills that they went to school to acquire. All right, uh, Alex, two yeah. things very fast mm -hmm. on the counter reaction. Mm -hmm. the, uh, we were talking over about uh, the, the whole world experiencing unemployment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the difference between Kenya and those other places is that they take the responsibility. Right. They know they know that it's their responsibility to mm -hmm. employ youths. So if they have not employed them, they take the burden by mm -hmm. paying them something to sustain them because it's their responsibility. Kenya the government is able to do that? In Kenya, what they do, what the politicians do, is say, oh, create jobs, hey, create job for yourself, uh, be an employer. How do you do that? No people shouting, create job, create jobs are all employed, including MPs. We have employed them. They come to us every five years to come, to ask for our votes to employ them. Mm -hmm. Talk of those who are in the parastatal, they are all employed, and then they are telling us to employ ourselves. Do you think the Surely. government is able to feed all the unemployed people? Why not if other countries are doing it? That in that way, it relates with the if, GDP if of they, the country. If they do it, if mm -hmm. they attempt doing it, mm -hmm. then they will see how to create employments for youths because they will hear, the, they will get the burden right. of, of feeding all the youths who are not employed. The, so they should attempt mm -hmm. uh, uh, solving it. They should attempt uh, paying them so that they feel the burden, so that they start creating employments reactively. All right. Uh, Yes, we, 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 we are, go to an employment. Sorry. We, we are having a population of, uh, right now, it's over 40 million uh, Kenyans. I don't know, subject to what this census would actually mm -hmm. prove. Then we are headed to 45, maybe 47 million, mm -hmm. even 50. Um, let's also consider the fact that um, we are overpopulated. Let me say, begin Growth by Growth rate is an issue. Growth rate is an issue. Mm -hmm. um, comparatively to Scandinavian countries, Denmark, Sweden, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, Spain, Spain, mm -hmm. Norway. Now, look, um, uh, my, my co-panelists have mentioned an issue about taking responsibility. Uh, for example, in a country like Denmark that has a population around five or six million, mm -hmm. uh, let, let, me, let me say so, uh, you realize that um, what, what I saw is mm -hmm. what they do is probably to try to have a, a, a cautionary effect mm -hmm. of when if, if a young person is out f from from school, mm -hmm. uh, after school, they are calling it gymnasium, for example, All that right. is equal to universities that we are having, mm -hmm. is that they make sure that social services are provided to these young people. Mm -hmm. If you are not employed, for example, you are asked to report to a job center, like mm -hmm. each and every week. Mm -hmm. And is this job center where you gain your stipend? You right. actu yes, they're actually given your stipend to sustain you. Mm -hmm. Why is that happening? It's simply because let us also look on a flip, flip side. These Scandinavian countries tax properly. Mm -hmm. they, they tax their population so that if, if you would want to be sustained, if mm -hmm. you want to have a remuneration, mm -hmm. have a decent housing, have a decent you know, medical cover, you must be willing to mm -hmm. pay your taxes. So at the guise of employment, and this is now the politics that we don't always understand in our campaigns. If, let's be very honest about our population. That w however much you expect government to provide a cushionary effect to unemployed young people mm -hmm. and other people, vulnerable people, mm -hmm. be very sure to fund that system. Mm -hmm. Be very sure to pay as much taxes. Uh, according to these statistics that we are having here, but I don't want us to do so much on this. I want us to go to page 16 of this PDF that talks about the main barriers to finding and starting a job because we need to look at the youth empowerment issue. But when we look at this, we, it says that unemployment and inactivity rates among female are double compared to male. So unemployment becomes now an issue when we narrow it down to the gender. Yeah, but they can be slave queens. No, but the <laughs> ladies, when ladies are not employed, uh -huh. they have other ways. They, in fact, they come employed indirectly. The, the few of us who are employed, they seriously rob us. So it's, it's proper. So if, if, it were, if it were like now the opposite, mm -hmm. that the ladies are the, now the ones employed, men are not employed, imagine how Kenya would be. Like uh, she's employed, mm -hmm. and you don't have. Uh, she's she's again coming to rob you the, the 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 thing you don't have now. So it's okay. So let men be employed. Are we really? Are we really just trying to say that <laughs> we, we are having information that is saying that female have less of these 
and male of these. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, again, uh, in my 2009 census, uh, th there, was, there was this, I don't know whether it's myth or factual, that <laughs> we are having a number of females. Yes. Much compared to... Yeah, to, they are men. To, to mm. Men is comparatively compared to male. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I, like I said, let, let's wait for this one to reveal the actuality <laughs> of, of that statistic. Figures. But then, um, looking at what has just been portrayed here, uh, you know what? What are the underlying factors that um, you know pits female uh, to have a double uh, tragedy and double impact for for matters of unemployment? I really look at the situation because that reflects nationally. Um, there are some areas in this country, mm -hmm. as we speak, even as much as there is education about um, young female who should be taken to school, you realize that culturally. Uh, in these areas, there is much disadvantage as opposed to, um, you know, uh, if, 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 if in some cultures provided where men and female would actually go to school, you, you could actually know the decision that these parents, for example, would take, mm -hmm. who to take to school. Yes. And remember, if you take somebody to school, you're actually giving a leeway for employment. Going to school and learning mm -hmm. is, is an advantage for one to get employment. Yes. But realize that in these areas, uh, in some remote areas even as we speak, mm -hmm. Some parents would choose to take f male male children mm -hmm. to school mm -hmm. and pretend that you know female would would maybe get green pastures somewhere or not. I think mm -hmm. this is m probably one of the factors that we can attribute to that. Also, when it comes to employment, mm -hmm. the labor market, there are even some bosses who would choose to mm -hmm. employ uh, male mm -hmm. simply because they fear that within the job market, if for example um, a, a male female become expectant. That would really create laws in terms For of you know some few months within a few months. Mm -hmm. So strategically, even even as human rights people are speaking about equal opportunities, matters of equity and equality, you realize within the hidden guys, some uh, you know employers mm -hmm. are actually considering that when it comes to employment, who would I choose to employ? Yes. But I like that is an issue. That's mm -hmm. an issue. That's an issue we should not discuss here. We do take care of them. <laughs> One man can take care even uh, of us seven mm -hmm. or eight of them. So that's an issue. Mm. Yes. All right, um, our time is almost up. But let me, let me probably be straightforward on this. According to the Kenya Youth Empowerment Project, they say is that lack of skills at for three for three percent. Mm. According to the graph, mm. and the main barrier to start a new business stands at 85% due to social cultural constraints. So my question is, are we lacking young people who have lack of skills for the job market? Yes, we do. We do mm. have uh, briefly because of time. Wrong choice of, of careers. Mm. Everybody wants a white collar job like mine, while mm. well we, paying after university. Uh, yes. All right. While the, uh, I, I was looking for, I was, I was building a Simba. Simba in Kijalu is that small house here, <laughs> which you build before you build a big one. Right. So I was looking for somebody who can paint it. I didn't mm -hmm. get, there are no people who can paint it. We don't have plumbers. Are we, we, don't are have, we having an issue of people shifting from the rural areas to the urban areas? Not, not shift. Mm -hmm. People are choosing wrong careers. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to be a teacher, to be a manager, to be a doctor. Ask any people in school. Nobody will tell you wants to be a plumber. Nobody will tell you wants right. to be a carpenter. They, we, we, are, we are all in a wrong skill. So we have clouded, we are, this influx of, uh, of, of these white collar jobs where the other skills are lacking. Yeah. So we, sh we need to shift. We, we teach our children that it pays to be an engineer in, in other fields. Mm -hmm. All right, yes. as we wind up, the government has provided several projects for the young people, uh, some of them being uh, establishing uh, national youth competitions, so as to try and gain the, or rather establish the persons with particular skills. Has, do you think we have really projected the right figures and the right way for young people to try and bring them on board to, to reduce well, unemployment? Could, could I disabuse the notion mm -hmm. that when we talk about youth employment and opportunities, mm -hmm. it's always about skills. It's always about talents. Could we begin to assume that there are young people who are actually resourced, who need to be taken through mainstream institutions right. mm -hmm. so that they would provide opportunities there? Because you know, one of the undoing that we are mm -hmm. having is whatever you mentioned youth empowerment project, People are thinking about provision of water tanks. People are thinking about provision of car wash. People are thinking about sports, skills, dancing, you know, um, athletics and football. That is a percentage of a skill set up for young people. 
I am actually challenging government that we are having mm -hmm. a serious intellectual capacity for some young people who might not really be interested in that skill setup that the government always think about when you mention youth. But these are young people who are properly resourced that would sit in the mainstream ministries or mainstream government institution to provide leadership. And hence, the need for employment for All them. Right. Now, uh, the other thing that uh, we I am looking forward as, as we, as we uh, you know, if, if we have a serious uh, idea about the Big Four agenda, I think it is most important mm -hmm. that we mainstream the youth issues within the Big Four agenda. Mm -hmm. If it's a housing issue, apart from asking young people to be, you know, constructors, build houses, would we have young people who are actually architectural designers? Could we have young people who have a skill and knowledge in provision for tenders? All right. So that we would have a serious, you know, uh, um, you know, consideration as opposed to relegating the interest of the young people in some small skills and, and experience here and there. Finally, there's a blessing in this case that we are actually dealing with CBC mm -hmm. as a new curriculum. It is a curriculum that sets forth building people's knowledge from the foundation that they are having. Right. If this is meant to be a true case, mm -hmm. I think the incoming of competence-based curriculum would actually help us to nurture young people with the resources early enough to mm -hmm. know exactly where their strength is. Mm -hmm. And that will help us to nourish them and connect them to the right job. All right, with that, I think we need to call it a day because we are running out of time. But I want to give you 30 seconds each to kindly give your final remarks. Parting shot. Uh, I thank the government for CBC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like uh, I'll be trained on what I need to do in future. Mm -hmm. Like up to now, uh, prior squares are not, have not helped me. The monocotyl led have not helped me. <laughs> the mole concept have not find, uh, found where to apply them. Mm -hmm. So the fact that the CBC, and I hope they will implement it rightly, so that it's identified what you can do. Like they could have identified that I would be president in future, mm -hmm. so that they, they they teach me the management of of, of people and resources. All right. Yes. All right. Done. Well, I, I think we have, we have a, a country to secure. Uh, we, we as young people have a critical mass mm -hmm. to decide. It's not a question of how. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a question of when. Mm -hmm. If we would critically you know, rally behind uh, our institution mm -hmm. in the youth-driven initiative, then I think it becomes a basis of bargaining with the government on what we really need. All right. So if we are always in the menu, mm -hmm. then we cannot be in the eating table. It is important mm -hmm. for us to be at the decision-making points. That is when we decide what is good for us. All right, many thanks for making it, gentlemen. And as, they, as my panelists have said, it's paramount, of course, for young people to be involved in each and every decision that is therefore required for us, of course, even as young people. My name is Karanja Alex. Many thanks for keeping it to 254. It has been youth and politics. And from us, we wrap it up. Val is coming up next.